In this video, we will learn the basics of Windows authentication with NTLM. So Windows authentication is based on many security best practices, yet it is also several weaknesses, especially when it comes to legacy authentication in the form of new technology LAN manager. So NTLM stands for new technology LAN manager and this type of authentication was first debuted with Windows NT in the mid 1990s. In this video, we will learn the hashing concept of NTLM, how we can encrypt a particular password and how we can decrypt a particular password. So if you have the hash, you can easily decrypt the password to a plain text and you can steal the password. So traditionally, NTLM and modern Windows versions basically continue to support NTLM authentication for both local and client server authentication. Professional environments with central authentication servers almost exclusively use uh, Microsoft Active Directory, which primarily uses Kerberos authentication. But when it comes to certain tasks and legacy support, the processes still use NTLM. So older consumer focused Windows versions like Windows 98 used to use an authentication mechanism called Local Area Network Manager or LANMAN or LM, which is still supported on modern Windows, but is generally disabled by policy due to the cryptographic weakness. So now coming to the concept of NTLM password hashing methodology, like other hash functions, NTLM takes an input of the arbitrary length. So for example, if I want to generate the hash for password 123, so it takes the arbitrary length of the password 123, performs some advanced mathematical functions on it, and outputs a digest of fixed length. So what is the fixed length for NTLM? It's 128-bit uh, hash function. So if I calculate, it generates this particular one and this is 128-bit hash function. And the, the same output will always produce. So for example, if I remove this, just remember F0DA. So what happens is if I do password 123 again, it will produce the same hash function. So it always, the input will always produce the same output hash. But it is computationally difficult to reproduce the input if you only have the output value. For example, if you have only this value, it is a bit difficult. Computationally, it is difficult to do that. But generally, there are websites like, um, for example, you go to hashes.com and you put this hash here and um, you do submit and it will immediately show you the plain text password. So for remote authentication, NTLM is a challenge response authentication method where the client authenticates by performing a calculation using the password hash. So what happens is when you take a client and a server, the client does the authentication and how it does the authentication, it will take this hash from the server and it will perform the calculation and a random value sent from the server. So it sends a random value and if the server calculates the same value from its stored copy of password hash, then the user is authenticated. So client generates the hash, sends the hash to the server and if that particular hash is available in the store or a hash store, then then the user is authenticated. Otherwise, the user authentication fails. To an extent, NTLM has a lot of security issues, but it's still widely used in the Windows authentication world. Make sure you have your Active Directory Kerberos mode, uh, Active Directory authentication using Kerberos because Kerberos is more stronger authentication than the NTLM. I hope this video is informative. In the next video, we will see how we can take a particular hash Use tools like Mimikatz in order to generate the password. That is going to be interesting. Stay tuned for that video. Until the next video, happy learning. Bye-bye.